Hello everyone, in this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be sharing with us about the ministry of the Word and the ministry of prayer. Stay tuned, stay connected, and prepare to be blessed by this powerful message. Let your heart be opened and receive with meekness the engrafted words of God. God bless you. Salt is needed. Your tomatoes and your vegetables are all needed, but they are not all needed at the same degree or to the same degree is that true if you fetch a handful of vegetables you don't put a handful of salt but salt is needed now when your whole food becomes one measure of salt is that food again you have destroyed it but is salt wrong no salt is not wrong but how you applied it is what can destroy that whole soup so the problem is not the revelations. Listen carefully. The problem is not the revelation and the different truths that we have. The problem is that it has not been arranged in a methodical order that builds the believer holistically. So you find out that we keep doing what is right and yet we never get results. So there are people who pray sincerely and yet you find out that I, my the energy I am dissipating in prayer versus the results that follow is not matching. Then we have people who supposedly study the word of God and criticize people who pray and say it's not about prayer, it's just about the word of God and they themselves become frustrated. So people in the body of Christ today are confused. What then controls the results that motivate my Christian experience? There are sincere men of God who walk in holiness and righteousness. Sincere people who love God with all their hearts. They have applied everything they know to do that makes for growth and makes for excellence. And it looks like there's no results. Every time... You have a problem in your life. I assure you the problem is not with God. Let God be true and all men liars. And so my assignment tonight within the minutes that I have is to bring together these various groups and help you understand that all of you are carrying pieces of the truth and none of you will excel in isolation. By the time the ministry of prayer says the ministry of the word, you have no business, just pray, you will be in for a bitter frustration. By the time you ignore the ministry of prayer and focus on the ministry of the word and say, I'm just studying the word, you are still going to get into big error. We will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the word. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130, The entrance of thy word is that light. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's light. So we have prayer people as we call it, and then we have word people as we call it. And here the apostles are correcting us that something is wrong with that understanding. That if you are to grow holistically, you are not given the liberty to choose the ministry of prayer or the ministry of the word. It says we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word. You see, one of the dangers that is plaguing the body of Christ today is not necessarily ignorance i submit to you that by the grace of god god has helped us to a measure to be able to bring levels of revelation and knowledge in the body of christ but the challenge largely and the reason why we are not able to become people of stature is because of imbalance negligence of certain dimensions and over emphasis of certain dimensions now, please look up. There are many women here and um, I know that you cook well in Gombe State. If I'm right, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you are preparing a wonderful meal, say you are preparing your soup. Salt is needed. 
your tomatoes and your vegetables are all needed but they are not all needed at the same degree or to the same degree is that true if you fetch a handful of vegetables you don't put a handful of salt but salt is needed now when your whole food becomes one measure of salt is that food again you have destroyed it but is salt wrong no salt is not wrong but how you applied it is what can destroy that whole soup so the problem is not the revelations listen carefully the problem is not the revelation and the different truths that we have the problem is that it has not been arranged in a methodical order that builds the believer holistically so you find out that we keep doing what is right and yet we never get results so there are people who pray sincerely and yet you find out that I, my the energy I am dissipating in prayer versus the results that follow is not matching then we have people who supposedly study the word of God and criticize people who pray and say it's not about prayer it's just about the word of God and they themselves become frustrated so people in the body of Christ today are confused what then controls the results that motivate my Christian experience there are sincere men of God who walk in holiness and righteousness sincere people who love God with all their heart they have applied everything they know to do that makes for growth and makes for excellence and it looks like there's no results every time you have a problem in your life I assure you the problem is not with God let God be true and all men liars so my assignment tonight within the minutes that I have is to bring together these various groups and help you understand that all of you are carrying pieces of the truth and none of you will excel in isolation. By the time the ministry of prayer says the ministry of the word, you have no business, just pray, you will be in for a bitter frustration. By the time you ignore the ministry of prayer, and focus on the ministry of the word and say i'm just studying the word you are still going to get into big error we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the word are we learning now this is very powerful that means both ministries are important for the holistic growth and development of the believer now please look up the ministry of the word and prayer was classically revealed in scripture by Jesus Christ himself number one the Bible calls him the word of God the logos of God are we together then when we get to Mark chapter 4 the Bible says when Jesus was baptized of the Holy Ghost listen carefully this is the word now you would think because he was the word he would not need to engage prayer again but as the word the moment he encounters he encountered the spirit of god the bible says the holy spirit himself drove him to the wilderness and he was there praying for 40 days no food no water who was praying the word so even the word prayed as the word of god he was engaged in prayer and engaged in fasting why would he have to pray again when he was the word of god the ministry of the word and prayer now watch this give us mark chapter matthew chapter 4 matthew chapter 4 will we have it projected let me just use my own bible here so we okay the bible says then was jesus we're reading from verse one to maybe six or so then was jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil verse two the bible says when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry now watch carefully we're about to see the unity of the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word the bible says the tempter came to him 
who did the tempter come to the man who had been praying and fasting for 40 days when he came to him he said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread verse 4 but jesus answered i just finished praying is that what he said you thought that just because he had prayed for 40 days now satan came to him what he used to drive satan was not his prayer he said it is written haven't prayed for 40 days haven't prayed for 40 nights if he did not know what was written satan would still defeat him as if all of his prayer was a waste listen the secret of his victory he did not say satan leave me alone i just finished praying that means his prayer alone did not drive satan in spite of his prayer and fasting the first person he met after prayer, you would think that prayer and fasting should drive Satan away. But the first person he met after prayer and fasting was Satan. And Satan was not shaking under the anointing. He came to him and he said, you are hungry. Turn this stone to bread. We will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the word. When Satan came to Jesus, he did not even respect the fact that he had been in constant touch with the Father. He said, if you are the Son of God, turn this stone to bread. Do you know if Jesus fell for that temptation, both him and the person who did not fast will have the same failure. Now, you imagine how frustrating that is. And Jesus said, verse 4, it is written. Not I think not respect my prayer it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of satan verse 5 then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple verse 6 now and said unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down for it is who is saying it is written satan himself now satan has switched now you want to show me you know scripture let's discuss scripture i also know what is written it is written keep it there please he shall give his angels he's testing his knowledge of the word since i see that your life is all about respecting what is written let me see what discernment you have now the discernment that has come from the place of prayer is what is assisting him to be accurate in ministering the word because satan now is also using scripture it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands shall they bear thee lest thou dash your foot against the stone so just because it is written if he did not have the foundation of prayer he will fall for that temptation because the temptation now is according to what is written are you seeing the danger of just having a word life without prayer the devil will use what is written and destroy you because your respect is to the ministry of the word and not prayer it is prayer that is able to build that discernment in acts chapter 16 the bible talks about paul the bible talks about a lady who had the spirit of divination and that this girl brought great gain are we together now Get great gain for her masters and when she saw the apostles she said these are holy men of god she was using truth but it took discernment from the residue of a healthy prayer life he said although what you are saying is right the spirit that is behind what you are saying is wrong and he rebuked the lady many believers do not understand the role that prayer plays in the life of the believer and the role that the word plays in the life of the believer 
you will never be able to be a person of stature and balance and accuracy and efficiency until you understand the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word both of them do not do the same thing they work together harmoniously in synergy to produce a victorious believer but prayer has its own ministry there are dimensions that prayer covers there are dimensions that the word covers the key is to understand that it is a combination of the ministry of prayer and the word that was the formula that the apostles left with us any deviation out of this formula will lead us into various shades of error we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and of the word <laughs> is god blessing someone first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24 show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to walk in the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest everybody please read what you can see there if you can find it are you ready one to read but unto them which are called both jews and greeks christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god one more time but unto them uh-huh i want to teach you something these two dimensions you see are the children of the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word please that every time you engage in prayer and you engage in the word what you will get as a result of both encounters is an anointing but that that anointing is expressed in two dimensions the anointing that comes from the ministry of prayer reveals itself as the power of God dunamis but the anointing that comes from the ministry of the word expresses itself as the power of God authority exousia the capacity to delegate by reason of intelligence follow very carefully now the Bible says to everyone who is called when the anointing is revealed through those ministries you will experience two things the power of God and the wisdom of God he said it is still Christ that is revealed the word Christ there means the anointing that means if I submit myself to the ministry of prayer there is a dimension of the anointing that will be derived from that ministry dunamis I will see the workings of the power of God in my life but that does not mean I will have the spiritual intelligence to walk in victory so I can be a powerful man of God able to pray and the sick will be healed and I will be poor I will be broke I may not understand the principles of leadership the devil can take my life any day because they know not neither will they understand as far as prayer is concerned I can submit myself to pray and because there is an anointing that is derived from the ministry of prayer so we have many powerful people who do not have the requisite level of spiritual intelligence to overcome the evil that comes with the day very anointed but there is a bankruptcy of spiritual intelligence then the Bible talks about the wisdom of God that comes from the Word of God are we together now 
there are people who neglect the ministry of prayer and they have the wisdom of God when you listen to them you will hear intelligent truths but the power to defend that proposition is not there they can tell you what God can do they can tell you beautiful things I know this God I'm serving and show you mysteries after mystery but when the time for performance comes the grace to make what they have said become flesh is no longer there Are we learning? Remember what we are dealing with. I hope we are still together. That we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and to the ministry of the word. That both ministries, there are two distinct kind of anointings that must be derived from those ministries. And they are equally important for the maturity and the excelling of the believer. Can I tell you, the disaster that we have in church today respectfully is largely as a result of these imbalances. When it has to do with the power dimension, it is usually the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. And because power seems to have a, char a charismatic quality, usually people just submit themselves to prayer and they do not understand doctrine and the soundness of the word. As a result, many supernatural things happen within the ministry but with it will come various shades of error for instance calling somebody's wife a witch because of prophecy you see you you may be by reason of prayer your eyes have been opened to see spiritual things but the word bank that interprets it to align with scripture is not there so you will keep bringing a lot of confusion in interpretation because what you saw was correct but your interpretation was wrong it depended on your word bank which is not there are we together so God can open my eyes for instance prophetically by reason of engaging in the ministry of prayer and I can see maybe a coffin and see someone's name written there now it is true what I saw is a revelation of what Satan wants to bring to that family it now depends on my knowledge of scripture to prove the dominion of the power of God over that situation if all I know is prayer I will interpret it the way I saw oh God I just saw you you are dying because that is the limit of what the power of God can do but if you understand that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy that means in anything prophetic you do it must testify about Jesus there must be that life giving component in what you are saying it will now alter my interpretation of that experience in a way that demonstrates the victory that is in Christ there is no limit to the casualties we will keep having in the body of Christ as a result of choosing one or the other of these ministries on the other hand you may have people who have that wisdom they will build intelligent systems but the sick will remain sick the oppressed will remain oppressed people will come and sing and share the grace and everybody will say God can do it there's sickness in my body oh he's a healer oh this chapter this verse this this chapter this verse this and the demons are sitting at ease and joining the service too because the power that takes them is not there can I tell you it is very dangerous to know what should be and not have the power to make it happen sooner or later members will get tired that is the truth like it's happening in many many assemblies right now to the point that when we men of God now say lift up your hands for blessings members know that look I'm used to this your talk wisdom there is no power I don't doubt the truthfulness of what you are saying but can I for God's sake have a testimony that becomes a consolation to all you are saying Are we together the danger of the prayer ministry without a sound word based is all shades of error that largely comes because of the prophetic inclination of the ministry of prayer for instance in the place of prayer God can give me an instruction 
and say Joshua Selman for the next five years you are not going to have more than two cars that came to me by prayer it is my personalized dealing with God if I do not understand the character of scripture I will turn that unique instruction into a doctrine and force all the members that anybody who has more than two cars you are walking in error based on my experience and what is largely destroying the body of Christ is we are converting personalized dealings and instructions into that is wrong you see if I come up with that template it is only the person who is called into the apostolic or the prophetic ministry who would benefit from the template I'm giving the person who is now called to be a politician and a businessman he will feel intimidated because it will look like he's not serious with God let me teach you something you see when you are building people holistically by the ministry of prayer and the word are we still here I hope I've not lost you the word of God gives a general ground for growth but as you begin to grow based on whatever your destiny is in Christ the Holy Ghost begins to allocate your own customized training the way he will train an apostle and a prophet is not the same way he would train a politician it's not the same way he, are you getting me now so I cannot say my template and my experience must be the alpha and the omega of how growth should be no God is training a young man see if God is calling me to be a prophet chances are you will find out that although we may start in the same prayer group or we may start in the same church as time goes on we will diverge to different unique dealings for the man who will later be a prophet you will find out that something will start changing in his appetite he can go for a 50 days fasting and not even know why there is an energizing upon him by reason of what he will be doing a businessman may not have that kind of increasing and now the businessman will be intimidated because he is forced to subscribe to the template of the prophet. If we do not bring wisdom to the body of Christ, believe me when I tell you this, people will keep pretending until we lose our stand spiritually. The power of God and the wisdom There are some of you here the more you pray and the more you fast you find out that you are having an unusual passion for education because there is a grace and if you do not understand how God builds men you may feel guilty and say why is it that it looks like the kind of passion my brother has for church and for prayer he can come and lie down on the altar here for one week whereas you there's a passion for you to go and get a PhD form and go abroad and now you feel guilty not knowing that it is the allocation of your destiny that is calling you so the yardstick that measures spirituality in our world today is becoming a pastor are you seeing why there are many people in ministry today who are in ministry but not necessarily called as pastors but because that is the template they have been told they will leave the thing God asks them to do and become pastors because that they want to ease the guilt of looking like they are not serious spiritually because when you say those who are spiritual stand up usually is the people who pray the politician you say what do they know about being spiritual businessman what do they know about being spiritual go and read the book of Daniel and see that the person who represented the purposes of God there was a politician go and read the book of Genesis and see that Joseph who brought salvation to Israel to Egypt Israel in Egypt it was an economic solution that he proffered listen do you know why I'm teaching you this if you do not get this balance you will never see development come to Gombe it is the error that has destroyed the north we are people of prayer but there is no development no advancement no nothing our children will leave God and go into something else and then if we do not rearrange this template there will come a generation that will not know this God we are crying about yes sir 
you've heard me say that there is one thing that is greater than the truth the whole truth if your truth is not the whole truth it can still destroy I've had the privilege to travel around by reason of what I do and when I go to cultures and regions I study cultures and I talk with people trying to get the understanding where we got our mindset from and for a long time in the body of Christ and especially around the middle belt and the north as we call it there has been an emphasis on the evangelical dimension of Christianity which is important that captures everything from salvation to morality and prayer and that is a very good background but we have hardly understood the principles that make for kingdom advance and territorial dominion the result is the current economic and sociological state of our society can I tell you you can be a prayer warrior but one policy by people who do not fear God can rubbish both you your church and your program in one day completely now we are beginning to reap the consequences of our carelessness and that's why God is putting platforms like this to give us intelligence to say hey you need both the wisdom and the power of God there are many many great men of God in this place you have tasted the power of God listen let me tell you I have met men of God in my life I have met people some of them nobody knows about them but when you look at them you will see you can sense tremendous power there is the health of their energy by reason of investing in the prayer ministry but there is hardly the manifestation of the wisdom of God absolutely nothing works in their life nothing at all there is nothing in their life that can give you the desire to see that God is at work in this vessel or there may be a few things at work and with it comes a plethora of imbalances please listen to me believers I came with a burden and a passion more than miracles signs and wonders which are important we need to begin to contend for the ministry of the word that administers the wisdom of God the Bible says through wisdom a house is built by understanding it is established it says through knowledge the house the rooms are filled with every pleasurable thing can I tell you it will take wisdom to pay the school fees of your children husbands it will take wisdom for you to be an effective husband you can be a prayer warrior respectfully speaking but if you do not understand the principles of being a father a husband and a priest you can be so deep in prayer and yet you will wreck your home into pieces many of us here have come from homes with pain by well-meaning Christian parents who had the power of God but did not have the wisdom of God and then on the other side of the pendulum we have people who have the wisdom of God and they even stretched it to the border their entire idea of Christianity is intellectualism the moment you say pray pray five minutes they say, oh no 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 there are no demons anywhere it's just your mind and all kinds of ideas come to downplay the ministry of prayer you fast fast for what and you find out that for these kinds of people they may have the wisdom of God but they later become frustrated because they keep proposing things that they do not have the power to defend Jesus can give children they quote scripture from Genesis to Revelation now a barren woman stands before you and say man of God I was lured by your message and I perceive you are a powerful man of God in the name of Jesus Christ may that child come 10 years nothing has happened because there is the wisdom of God that communicates truth but the power of God that makes the word become flesh is not there is someone hearing me why am I teaching this the Lord put this in my heart please look at me many of you right now as you are seated here 
if I ask you to submit your prayer request right here, you are sincere people. Some of you are workers in church. Some of you have prayer groups. Some of you are even pastors. But you are finding out right now that you have high blood pressure. It's not because you are not praying, you are not fasting. The financial bills on you, the trouble to pay rent and venue, and your wife is asking you and saying, this ministry thing we are doing, I hope there is a plan for our children. And it's now beginning to frustrate your own spiritual life. You keep seeing the power of God, but the wisdom that builds systems is not there. Jesus did not just leave us his power alone. The same spirit that is called the power of God is also called the spirit of wisdom. I made up my mind as a man of God that I will not bring failure and reproach to my life by ignoring any dimension as recommended by Jesus and even the apostles. I can tell you most times when you see people who God has lifted, most times people believe they are just anointed you are right provided you can explain the dimension of the anointing there is the anointing that comes as the power of god but there is the anointing that comes as the wisdom of god i have met great men and women of god for instance i'm using ministry just as, as an example and based on what i saw in their lives the nation should be hearing them but the wisdom that makes for growth and influence they do not have yet they are genuinely powerful greater than the joshua selmans by reason of their sacrifices but the wisdom for growth is not there and there are sincere people i have had people come to me and say apostle i spent time studying the word there is no man of god whose message i have not listened to why are things not working in my life because you have accessed the wisdom of God. But can I tell you, when it has to do with advancement, it is power that moves you forward. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy ways. It is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves. Now listen carefully. What part have you chosen? You can know what part you've chosen by the consequences around your life right now. For some of you as you are seated you love the lord sincerely but you are almost giving up on ministry because you are saying lord this is not fair i've kept myself holy i've loved you all my life i even have a prayer group or i have been part of the prayer band in my church for 10 years and there is nothing in my life people look at you and say this is your christianity that does not have proof you are the first to shout and pray you are the first to run and go for night vigil but is it that god does not love you even unbelievers are moving forward there is something wrong with your equation you have accessed the power of god but you probably have neglected the wisdom of god and there are others who are full of philosophies they will argue everything they will show you scripture after scripture but when it has to do with the performance of the word, you can see someone who the devil has oppressed them. You can see patterns of witchcraft within the family, but the power to break it and set them free is not there. Oh, in the name of Jesus, be free. And you, you too, you will know that that person is not free. And you know, members, members can be funny. Even when they know that nothing touched them, they will just respect you and say amen and move and go to where they know they will find a real solution. Because they are afraid of you, they won't tell you that they prayed for me here. They will just say, is that your prayer? And you too will be surprised because you know that with what you have, oh, results should not come from that kind of prayer. Please hear me. Brothers and sisters, my assignment tonight is to show you where we are missing it. So that Gombe can become a place of fire. Listen, a place of power, a place of spiritual, economic, political, sociological development. That is the full counsel of God. It should not just be that we have prayer warriors who are poor, who are broke, who are weak, who are not doing anything, men who cannot take care of their wives, women who have to go into prostitution or unfaithfulness because they are trying to look for money somewhere. That is sabotaging the counsel of God. 
May our children not become arm robbers while we are praying because of sheer hardship. And may we not have a society that is full of intellectual people who downplay the power of God. There must be that balance. We will give ourselves continually. Somebody say continually. So businessmen must give themselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the word. Politicians must give themselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the word. Men and women of God must give themselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the word. Academicians give themselves continually. So the professor has the wisdom part and he can see a student who is failing and because he also has the power of God, he can say, I'm looking at you and you said your father, you are the first to rise in your family. This is not an issue of not understanding my cause. Lock my door, come. I know what to do for you. Because he has both the wisdom and the power of God. So you are not just an intellectual. When you see that the situation demands the power of God, you put on your priestly regalia and say, don't confuse that I'm a vice chancellor. I'm also anointed. There is an anointing there. Are you seeing that now? Listen. And there are times that people will come and tell you my life is not moving forward I love the Lord you know what is missing that he has gotten the power of God but what he needs is the wisdom of God you can now give him a few teachings like a doctor will give a patient a drug take Panadol or take this two in the morning two in the afternoon you can submit them the person to a teaching to go and learn the principles that now make him a responsible father in addition to a prayer warrior an empowered man when you are empowered and anointed the devil is in trouble hear me for as long as we keep having different pieces of the truth and fighting ourselves the devil is happy because he can use either of us for his benefit he will come to the power people and cause them to be full of pride by reason of the charismatism around their results and they will not pay attention to the ministry of the world what do I need the word for? After all, I have power. And then the intellectuals will say, don't mind all these people. They are just daft people who are just, only God knows where they got power from. And the devil, the devil rejoices over that imbalance and that confusion. But in Gombe tonight, there is a generation rising that will give themselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the world please sit down there are many things that prayer achieves in the life of the believer and there are many things that the word of god achieves in the life of the believer i may not have time to run all of them but let me just walk you through one or two at least for tonight what is in the word of god is right why do I need to access the word of God? The word of God is a compendium of the ways of God. Please write it down. The word of God is a compendium of the ways of God. Psalms 103 and verse 7, please. something is happening here tonight believe me something is happening here tonight he made known his ways unto Moses and the Bible says his acts do you know what the acts are the results the manifestation that's what Israel saw but Moses knew the ways the methodologies of the kingdom please look up what do you gain when you give yourself to the ministry of the world primarily the wisdom of God but the wisdom of God manifests as helping you understand what we call the mysteries of the kingdom please say after me the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 Jesus was teaching and he said it has been given unto you to know the mysteries 
of the kingdom of heaven what are mysteries a mystery is a hidden code of operation that is privy to a group of people i have there we have a beautiful military and police force outside when you come among the police and the military they have languages that except you're a policeman or you're in the force you will not understand is that true with respect to you what you are hearing are mysteries there are secret communications when you go to the lawyers the legal people they can say certain things latin words certain codes and it is a mystery to you if you are not in the legal practice in this kingdom listen carefully we have mysteries the mysteries are the secrets of the kingdom by which we rise we call them mysteries if you want to experience growth in this kingdom there is a mystery that controls it you want to experience influence there is a mystery that controls it you want to enjoy economic blessings there is a mystery that controls it you want to enjoy restoration there is a mystery that controls it can i tell you this your assignment as a believer in accessing the word and the wisdom of god is to fish out all of these mysteries and hold them like keys and when you stand before that door you know the key that opens it are you getting blessed this is very powerful man of god your church will not just grow because god sent you there is a mystery that controls growth dear politician you would not just rise and have people vote you just because you are well intentioned there is a mystery that controls influence and acceptance young man you will not just be established because you are saving money to buy land there is a mystery that gives you the grace for territories man of god gombe will not listen to you just because you are sincere there is a hear ye him anointing and if that grace is not upon you you can be well intentioned and you will be surprised that even your own brethren will not hear you question what do you not know because it is by these mysteries we do business in deep waters you can you can command results that are superordinary supernatural by reason of these mysteries Is someone learning please look up many of you believe in the ministry of destiny help us and many of you believe that God can empower someone to come and hold your hands and help you but how many of you know that everybody on earth is busy focusing on their own destinies so what do you think will make them forget about themselves and focus on you you think it's ordinary no there is a mystery that controls that favor Is God helping us now? So you see that it's not about being good or bad. No. The mystery. I made up my mind that I will learn the truths of the kingdom that will grant me the wisdom. And you see, let me tell you this. When it has to do with the mysteries of the kingdom, they are able to deliver to you your inheritance in Christ. Here's what the Bible says. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, and now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. The Bible says it is able to build you up. And then number two, it is able to deliver to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. That means you are a man of God here and God has destined for you that through your life there will be revival in Gombe. Through your life God will come and bless and lift the youth. You will be surprised old age can catch up with you and you can pass on to glory and not even save on to up to 100 people because there is a mystery you have ignored. Can I tell you this? When I was starting ministry or when I began my work with God 
because of the nature of how God visited us those days on campus it was a marvelous move of God our focus was just on prayer and all of this but the time came when I had an encounter and this was when God began to teach me this and say son I'm taking you far there are many other things you need to learn I remember there were many people those days on campus I called their attention lovingly and I said gentlemen we have submitted ourselves we have built capacity in prayer but the Lord is telling me there are other dimensions we have neglected and if we don't pay attention to them they will affect us in the future because what we don't take out the time to learn I tell you sincerely and I don't say it to be sarcastic some of these people are not even in ministry today because the areas they neglected Satan used it to destroy them imagine that as I've come here right now I don't have food to eat and my family is not in place because I, I, I ignored learning the mystery that controls economic empowerment now that the prophetic is upon my life do you know chances are excellent that I would deviate into error because of hunger because I ignored understanding the financial principles of the kingdom for instance I can be a sincere man of God but when you see your loved ones crying you wouldn't know when you would do something you never believed you, you could do that's what you see you see a lot of people who started well as at the time the man started pursuing the Lord he was maybe a young boy in primary school or secondary school or maybe in college somewhere now he's married with four children responsibilities have come and you will find out that compromises begin to come because the day you watch your wife and your children cry and say man of God I know you are a prophet but we are hungry something is wrong the troubles and the battle you are watching your children about to die and you don't have the money for a simple medical thing now you have the prophetic you will come to our dear politicians the devil will deceive you into coming to meet them and say ah, her excellency is here why don't you use this prophetic and do something and get 500,000 out are you seeing that this is what has birthed a lot of compromises hear what I'm telling you if you want to last embrace the whole counsel of God if you ignore any area that area you ignore will be the strength of Satan in your life tomorrow when it is time to pray and fast pray and fast like everything depends on it when it is time to access the wisdom of God and you see you can pray immediately but you are not transformed immediately transformation takes a long time is why a lot of believers the bible says in the latter days some they will not endure sound doctrine it takes stamina to sit down and learn the ways of god it's why many young people will want to go into ministry the moment they pray a little revelation here and there somebody is shouting in their meeting they are set for ministry and they fire like ignorant foxes into a forest and they find out that in two weeks they preach all the messages they have and now they are wondering what in the world do I do because you see when you start the prayer group the ten people with you are all sincere people but by the time they become hundred thieves have come wicked people have come witches and wizards have joined the church now you need the wisdom of God but because you didn't pay attention to it you keep praying until they steal all your money until the witches and wizards destroy you and neglecting the whole counsel of God I hope you are learning I'm not just being sarcastic and there is no tell them here God is speaking to everybody are we together the first crusade that we ever had that I had as a man of God it was we were not many in the crusade ground in all honesty I'm not sure we we're more than 50 but it was a powerful crusade the sick were healed many things happened but can I tell you the truth I did not understand the principles of influence to be able to make an intelligent publicity I did the best that we could do with what I thought was my knowledge we prayed and fasted as if I would not even see again the few people that came were healed and it was a great start but not much could be done and now we hired sound from Kaduna and after they finished the crusade it was time for the bills now 
I stood there frustrated. I'm, I'm, I am I'm quoted scripture. These guys were going to embarrass me. I said, I'm not a thief. I fear God. Will I come and preach? And you know, when you are preaching in a crusade ground, you are shouting about the God of all possibilities. And the sound people you are owing are listening to you while you are preaching. They are waiting for the, the crusade and the sick are healed and everybody would have gone. And I stood there I had to liaise with the drivers I said take my people back to Zaria by the time you get to Zaria that the transport money will be there and I said God this can't be it no there's something about you I take responsibility there is something I do not know there's no point arguing you are God you are God all by yourself you see let me tell you if you want to see all of God take responsibility early stop blaming people and blaming this and say there is something I do not know period the more you are humble and meek the word of God can come to you and it was after that encounter I went back and God began to open to me when you read the Bible it says add to your faith this add to this this add to this this it makes you complete and I learned that principle I said father I don't want to be the man of God who will come and manipulate people tomorrow I have a covenant with God that I will do ministry with integrity. I don't want a situation where I see politicians and see people or our dear men and women of God. Imagine that out of my pain now, I'm looking for say one million naira. I will now prophesy to you and I will say, look, I know what is in your account and I'm not lying. I will abuse the prophetic because of hunger. Can I tell you, even if you are a prophet, when there is no food, you will die. Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2. Let the Bible speak. I'm not just talking about financial issues. I am saying our gospel must be holistic to affect both the hearts of men and the strata of society. Now, Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt. Is it there in your Bible? Jacob said to his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Please read verse 2 if you are a Christian. 1, 2, read. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down hither and buy for us from thence that we may live. Even a prophet will die when there is no corn. Can I tell you, there is only one reason God's covenant people go to Egypt. Hunger. Hunger can take a believer from the place of integrity to a place of bondage. Hunger can literally take even the child of a prophet to Egypt. How did they become slaves in Egypt? It was hunger that took them there. Let's be careful so that our children will not renounce the faith on their way to Egypt because of hunger. Let's be careful so that we don't put pressure on men of God to begin to compromise because of bills and trouble. Let's be careful so we don't begin to double Christianity and witchcraft all in a blind search for results. You can embrace the whole counsel of God and become a person of dexterity and balance. Blessed in every area. Can I tell you, God can visit you in every area and give you rest roundabout. You become a better portrait of what he can do. Genesis 24, 1. We'll soon pray now. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. And Abraham, please keep it there, was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. How many things? Man of God, God can bless you in every area. Now, let me tell you this. You are here and you are not given to the ministry of prayer with fasting. There is a dimension of discernment and growth that you can never have. No matter, you can quote scriptures and just flatter yourself and the power of performance will not be there. It is in the place of prayer 
that you build discernment. It is in the place of prayer that you build the capacity to endure the days that come. When people begin to criticize you by reason of the anointing you carry, have you built the stamina to endure and still love? That is the ministry of prayer. The, the primary assignment of prayer is not for petitions, it's for your growth and transformation. By the time the powers of darkness mandated by Satan to attack your integrity, whether you are in ministry, whether you are in politics, I hope you know that the moment you declare that you are standing for Jesus and becoming a light, you have drawn a line between you and the devil. It's not until you are a preacher, anyone at all, who will name the name of Christ. I assure you Satan will come after you. It will take stamina and capacity. If Jesus did not pray, and fast for that long he may not be able to do well with it is written the force that powered it is written was derived in the place of prayer through testimony listen carefully in 2009 or 2010 I had a vision and the Lord told me I was trusting God for direction for the next 10 years or thereabout of my life listen we're about to pray and at that time, for many of you, there are many fathers here who will tell you, the media ministry was the major way that God will use, you know, CD sales of CDs and the rest to be able to generate income for ministry. And, you know, I was just trying to say, Lord, I'm now rising to a point where demands are coming. What is the blueprint? I want to work with integrity. It was in the place of prayer that the Lord gave me a revelation and said, you will not sell any CD or anything. He said in the future see this will not people will almost not buy it again because technology will change the narrative he said take the audio of your message and put it online my angel will take it to the nations that is how I will announce you listen carefully this came from the place of prayer now you rewind to that time it didn't make sense because that time you you put your message online you are wasting your time what are you doing there but the foolishness that comes from discernment through prayer. That simple instruction in obedience to God is what has helped to do what God has done in the life of this man standing before you. Prayer will help you know what the next 10 years will be like. And you can go ahead. Listen, when Jesus was praying, the Bible says the disciples started their journey. Remember, when it was done, they were praying and they entered the boat and they started moving. They were six hours ahead of Jesus, but he was praying. But the moment he was done praying, he got up and walked on water. Prayer can give you an advantage. You can redeem time in prayer. Prayer can give you the result of 10 years and bring it in one year. They were using a boat six hours away ahead of Jesus. You would call Jesus' prayer life a delay and a waste of time. But he got up from that prayer ministry with the empowerment to walk on water. And he walked on water. Within a short time, he had caught up with them. They looked at him and they thought he was a ghost. And you know, Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. And even Peter walked on water. Your prayer life can even make others benefit. That it was on account of that strength, he could say, let me help you too. You can walk on water. Ladies and gentlemen, if you choose prayer and you neglect the word, there will be a striking imbalance in your life. Your life will not be a fair capture of the portrait of a true believer in Christ. And if you choose the word of God and ignore prayer you will only be filled with dogmas and philosophies that will frustrate you for such people the Bible says ever learning and yet never coming to the knowledge of the truth anything they say you say I know John chapter you will help the preacher finish the verse but there are no results in your life the tree can be green leaves you will attract people to come who are hungry but you will not be able to feed them and help them why have you come here tonight to reignite that fire and that appetite 
for some of you you have come here tonight to repent from laughing at people who are given to the ministry of prayer and you laugh at them and say they will suffer we are just focusing on the word you are making a mistake and God is calling many of you who have become arrogant because of the place of prayer and the prophetic and the apostolic to tell you hey all these your pastors and reverend you are insulting and saying they don't see anything many many years when you are down they will still be standing because the word of God will keep them standing when the revival of the 60s and 70s broke out in America with Papa Hagen and all of these men he was not the only one who caught that fire there were many but some ignored the word they enjoyed the ministry of the Holy Spirit and where they were just doing their things Papa Hagen warned them and said you people are building on sand you are not building on the rock they ignored him many of them fell like a pack of cards and he said many years I will still be standing he embraced the ministry of the spirit and prayer he, expe he embraced the ministry of the word and today when you talk about those revivals that is the name that captures that move of God so that a time will not come when we are talking about the history of the move of God in Bombay who we'll say from this year to this year there were some young men who were on fire praying and working miracles but they just went down all of them one by one you've seen this happen with people people come balloon success they arrive some of them on campus some of them everywhere on fire for five years ten years praying it's as if they are ghosts they can fast for one year but after six seven years because they do not have a word bank when the vicissitudes of life hit at them i have met a few people that i used to know on campus i don't say this with joy in my heart but i've met some of them some of them you would believe that with the zeal they were carrying as far as prayer and the charismatic move of god was concerned honestly you would think by now they should even be maybe a global ministry and some of them i've met them and i look at them looking so wretched and some of them you know that they are not even serious with god again what happened the one that struck me most as we prepare to pray true story a gentleman once upon a time many years ago this gentleman was even ordained a pastor i had warned him one time i said the way you are ignoring the ministry of the word and the whole counsel of god it will affect you ignore me eventually the gentleman traveled abroad just to go and further his studies he returned back a few years maybe like four or so years ago to come and renew his papers guess what he had become an atheist this was a young boy that was getting people filled with the holy ghost and he just laughed he said africa is our poverty and suffering that is making us do all these gym gym things i said my god what is this these were people who would roll inside the rain and say lord use me i found that i would listen if you don't embrace the whole counsel of god let your life be an inspiration not a lesson not a lesson for people many 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 great people have risen just like you many preachers i assure you you are not the first man of god to begin to have encounters you are not the first to see jesus you are not the first that the power of god is already moving ask our fathers of faith here they will tell you stories of people who have risen and sadly some have fallen but there were others who looked like they would not stand they built with the simplicity of the word and prayer and when all the dust settles they are still standing there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are thrones there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends 
and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end 